Welcome AP Biology students. This is a little bit of an introduction to the course and some science practices. So let's begin. AP Biology in itself as we go along, filling your guided note sheet. AP Biology, throughout the course you will study the core scientific principles, theories, and processes that govern living organisms and biological systems. The course is broken down in the science practices, skills, that are needed and content. The science practices are skills that you are expected to develop and apply throughout the course. Such science practices include concept explanation, analyze visual representations, determine scientific questions and methods, represent and describe data, perform statistical tests and data analysis, and develop and justify scientific arguments using evidence. Overall, the AP Biology curriculum, as stated by the College Board, is broken down into these big ideas. Um, big idea number one is evolution, which is the process of evolution, is what drives the diversity and unity of life. Big idea number two deals with energetics, which is looking at biological systems uh, and how those biological systems use energy and molecular building blocks to grow, reproduce, and maintain dynamic homeostasis. Big idea three is the information storage and transmission. Um, basically, living systems store, retrieve, and transmit, and respond to information essential to life processes. And the fourth big idea is system interactions, looking at that biological systems, how they interact with each other, and these systems um, and how they uh, basically interact or exhibit complex properties throughout that interaction. The big, big ideas serve as the foundation of the course, and those big ideas are further broken down into enduring understandings, which are the long-term takeaways of each concept, and the learning objectives, which define a student needs, define what a student needs to be able to do with the content knowledge in order to pro, uh, progress toward the enduring understandings. And then lastly, there is that essential knowledge, which is gonna be used to describe the knowledge required to perform that particular learning objective. AP Biology units, there are eight units that we cover. You can see all these eight units here, and you can see how all these units have overlapping big ideas. So it's not like you could just learn uh, the content of unit one and forget about it because that will be embedded in each additional unit as we move along. Biology is definitely one of those sciences that builds upon itself. So biology review, let's take a look at what the biology review is and biology as a science and as a, a process. So science at the heart of every, uh, at the heart of science is inquiry. Inquiry is the search for information and explanation. There are two main steps. Uh, the first step is to make observations. The second step is to form hypotheses. Basically, when we make observations, uh, we are going to describe natural structures and processes through observation and analysis of data. That's our story to what this is all about. Um, data in itself is recorded observations and me measurements. We know that there are two types, two types of data. You could have qualitative data, which is data that we collect through observations uh, with our senses, the use of our senses. We typically uh, describe qualitative data or define it as descriptive data. The other type of data is quantitative data. Quantitative data is measured using instruments. So it's some sort of, of uh, data that involves numbers or it's numerical based. Additionally, we have inductive reasoning. And inductive reasoning is when you derive gener generalizations based on a large number of specific observations. So inductive is deriving generalizations based on a number of specific observations. So let's take a look at forming hypotheses and we'll see how inductive reasoning and deductive reason, reasoning play a role here. 
So basically a hypothesis is a prediction that can be tested by recording more observations or experiments. It's often heard as an if then because, but does not need to be in this format. The key thing about a hypothesis is that a hypothesis must be testable. So that statement needs to be a testable statement. But if you do write it as an if then statement, the if, it would be if the manipulated variable, that is the uh, independent variable, that variable that you are changing, and the then would refer to the responding variable, or what we would refer to as the dependent variable in an experiment. The because is just an uh, optional explanation as to why you think the one would relate to the other. Ultimately, hypotheses can either be supported or refuted by the data that's collected. So the data ultimately is our results, and those results can either support or refute. Uh, one thing that you do need to pull away from is to never say that a hypothesis is correct or incorrect. We need to use the term support or refute. So that brings us to deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning is when you have specific results are derived from the general premises of other things. So let's take a look at this as you fill in your concept check on your guided notes. Every test has been easy, therefore the final will be easy. Would that be a, a, a deductive statement or an inductive statement? The answer would be inductive. Two, all athletes work out. John is an athlete, therefore John works out. Would that be an inductive or a deductive statement? That would be a deductive statement, correct. Three, all organisms are made of cells based on years of research. Would that be an, an inductive statement or a deductive statement? You said inductive, you are correct. And lastly, all organisms are made of cells. Dogs are organisms, therefore dogs are made of cells. Would that be an inductive statement or a deductive statement? If you answer deductive statement, you are correct. So hypotheses can be written two ways. And when we write a hypothesis, we always want to start with writing a null hypothesis. And basically the null hypothesis, H0, is a hypothesis which researchers try to disprove, reject, or nullify. That's where we get that idea of a null hypothesis. The hypothesis means that there is no difference between the two groups of data and the experimental observations are basically due to chance. An example null hypothesis would be H0 is there are no there will be no difference in headache relief between individuals who take Tylenol and those who do not. So that would be an example of a null hypothesis. Or basically what you're saying is Tylenol will have no effect on headache relief. Now this is different than the alternative hypothesis. So after we state our null hypothesis, we then wanna go on and state our alternative hypothesis. And that starts with H1 and then continues, we can make many H2, H3, et cetera, as many alternative hypotheses that the researcher would deem necessary for the experiment. An example alternative hypothesis would be, Tylenol will allow for relief when consumed by patients with headaches. The second alternative hypothesis might read something like, Tylenol will worsen symptoms when consumed by patients with headaches. So let's take a look at writing some of these null and alternative hypotheses. So read the question below and formulate one null and one alternative hypothesis. Does the use of nitrogen-based fertilizer in soil affect the growth of sunflowers? All right, pause for a minute. Now let's take a look. Nitrogen-based fertilizers have no effect on the growth of sunflowers. That is a great null hypothesis. An alternative hypothesis would read something like, 
if nitrogen based fertilizers are used in the soil, then it will increase the growth of sunflowers because nitrogen is necessary for leaf growth. So there's our because statement. So that because statement again is an optional statement. Let's look again. Determine a suitable null and alternative hypothesis for this question. Pause and think about it. Are teenagers better at geometry than adults? The null hypothesis might read, age has no effect on the ability to do geometry, versus the alternative hypothesis, which would read, if teenagers and adults are given geometry problems to solve, then adults will solve more problems than teenagers because they are older and have more experience doing problems. Or it could read, adults may be able to solve more, adults may be able to be able to solve geometry problems better than teenagers. So that would be a testable statement. Notice the if then format was removed, but it still works as a hypothesis because it is testable. All right, work on practice problems two for two through four in your guided notes packet. That's it for this lecture.